computers. They're the technical marvel of the modern era and probably what you're watching on right now. But what if I made one in Minecraft? Well, you won't believe what I did this week. That's right, I made my very own handy dandy text file, which is kind of a computer. Now you may see this and be like, wow, this is super complicated, but really, it's not. You see that big a thing? That's just this, but copied 30 times. You may also be asking yourself, well how, how on earth, do you get the letters on there? Well, it's something I like to call binary decoding, and a lot of other people like to call binary decoding. You see, if I click the number one, look at this. Oh, just kidding, that circuit's broken. Okay, now if I press one, it should... Wait, no, it's still broken. This actually isn't what's over there. This is like a backup from a while ago, but it works close enough. See, it's the letter A. And then you might be thinking to yourself, that's cool. You know, you got a, you got a system that can display the letter A. But guess what it can also do? Please work. Yeah, the letter B, kind of. It's weird. You gotta have those two lines there, or else it looks like an 8 and isn't properly spaced, so it's really annoying. But this works, this works fine. Now, if you were to ask me this time last week, hey, how do you make a binary decoder? I would be so confused, because I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was this simple, okay? In fact, seeing how one worked is the whole thing that inspired me to make that giant thing. All you gotta do is make sure that only one of these lines is on at any given moment by just depowering the lines if all the correct bits are inputted. Now you might be thinking, that's really confusing. I don't understand how any of this works, and that explanation was really bad. Well, good for you. You're not alone. I know how all this works, but I, I, I have no idea how to explain it. Other than torch go off, and that's good. It's like just one huge logic gate that just kind of works. It's pretty cool, and something I didn't know is that there's like little patterns, like like for the first digit, there's um, like a repeating pattern of three, bam, three, bam, three, bam, three, bam. You see, it's a kind of a cool system. So like you'll know if you mess up because it always follows this pattern. Same with the second place, you know, you got bam, five blocks, bam, one, bam, five blocks, bam, one block, bam, five blocks. It's great. And same goes for all the other ones, but I can't just eyeball this, say it's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's nine. Oh my gosh, I can. But there's no way I'm guessing that this is 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ha <laughs> ha. No, I cheated. It's because there's a repeater here. But there's no way I'll know that this one's also 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Anyway, the signals get decoded, that's cool and all, but how does it make it to the screen? How do you do that? How is that possible? What's going on? And I'd like to say that this is the solution. See, look, it perfectly displays an M. Just kidding. It doesn't. It does this. Like, this works fine if you just, like, want to see all the redstone, but you can't. And from far away, what does that even say? Does that say M? So what most people do is just fill in all the redstone blocks. You know, like, look at that. You can read the lack of an M from super far away. It's epic. But I actually want this to, like, look like an M. So I had to make this thing, and, oh, and like, you can just see the difference. There's, it's, oh my god, this took three hours. I'm not even kidding. But if we put in all of the correct inputs, we get an M. And look, you can you can see it. You can see it from so far away. It's not, it's so cool. Basically, this redstone powers all the redstone blocks adjacent to it, because because for some reason redstone lamps are solid blocks instead of transparent, like every other light source in the game. So we have to use this thing, and it just like very carefully make sure that like no no extra blocks get powered it was a huge pain to make i don't regret it though also i did not come up with this um 16 segment display um i i, may, I might have given enough time but i don't think i would have come up with this specific design like this is a genius design you know all the wiring and stuff i came up with that myself the 16 segment display and the binary decoder those I, I got from other people but like like everything else, I redstoned myself. I came up with the really wacky way of 
powering all this stuff. I even made a chart. All the blocks with red stained glass correlate to lines on the top line. Same with the green and the blue. Like, look. It's so, it's such nicely laid out. The only downside is that when you're actually encoding the um, display, it's kind of annoying at first to know where stuff connects to, because like how the stuff ended up getting laid out. Purple, it's a diagonal. Logically, it should be on the green set, because it's in the middle, but it's not. It's on the bottom one. Okay, you know, that's cool. I can make one display display something and I can make it one display, display that same letter. But then, how do I make it not look like my computer's eternally screaming whenever I write the alphabet? Well, that's all thanks to a super cool system that I like to call the, uh, the double gate redstone letter stopper. Yeah, that sounds about right. Basically, when the board is clear, every single character has this purple line deactivated, which means that redstone can pass through. So on the first character, any signal that goes through will go past pink and purple and then into the actual decoder to be displayed. Once that character reaches this, it gets toggled on so that it, it just like keeps displaying that instead of just like putting it on for like a few seconds. It does that by kicking a shovel down here into the dropper up here. And this comparator's like, okay, there's a shovel in there now, let's activate this redstone line activate over here, and then deactivate the pink line. So now, when you're over here, the pink line can now um, receive signals. But wait a second, isn't that going to make it so that this line also changes? No, no, no. Because also when this line activates, at the exact same time, it also stops this letter from receiving signals. Though technically, even if it did receive signals, it, um, it wouldn't actually matter because, you know, this doesn't activate this dropper, so we're good. Copy-paste that whole system 30 times, and now you can write a sentence. A very short sentence, albeit, but a sentence nonetheless. Did I ever show how you're supposed to display the letters? Because I don't, I don't think I explained it. As I explained before, each of these lines are hooked up to a certain, you know, segment on the 16-segment display. And then, by powering specific lines, it activates that given segment. As I mentioned, some of these aren't as intuitive as the rest because, you know, purple, that's not part of the, the normal segments with all the other diagonals, but because it, it's down here, but, you know, it, it works. Anyway, back up to the upper logic, you have this line that comes in from the keyboard, just like all the, uh, the binary inputs. Anyway, this line basically just resets everything by activating this top dropper, uh, which just, you know, if there's anything currently in the system, it takes it out pretty easy. Ah uh, yes, the long-awaited segment of the video. The keyboard. Remember the display? Well, basically, this is just kind of the display, but like, a lot simpler, actually. Binary encoding is significantly easier than binary decoding. Like, look at this. Got a repeater in sight besides ones that like strengthen signal. Like, really, look, this is binary decoding, look at this, this is, this is an atrocity. But binary encoding, you just, like, place a few torches, and you're done for the day. And for me, who stayed up to, like, one in the morning to do, doing this, like, it, it, like, actually was the end of my day, so it was even better. English is lucky enough to basically be able to assign one letter to one number, and no one really get angry, you know, like, A, no one's going around like, A is the third letter of the alphabet, no, no one says that, you know. We just kind of all agreed that A corresponds with 1, you know? So whenever I click the A note block, you'll notice that the that the 1, that the 1 place, whatever it's, I don't, I don't know the binary technical terms, the 1's place, I'm going to call it, lights up, and boom, it sends a signal to the screen, and look, there's an A. You type in a B, guess what it does? Give it a few seconds, it's pretty fast, but it's not like lightning speed. There's a B, now you might be thinking, wow, you can just like, send it up there willy-nilly. No, no, no. We have to have each place perfectly synchronized, or pretty much perfectly. Because if you'll remember back to up here, the second that this gets a signal, this system locks. You can't get any more. So if I send a C, which is the one's place and then the two's place, but the one's place gets there first, the two's place probably isn't going to get there in time, meaning that it's just going to display an A. 
thankfully I, I thought of this before it became a huge problem, which is great because I definitely would have become a huge problem. Thankfully this huge problem had a really simple fix, and that was just to use the same amount of repeaters for each digit. For simplicity's sake, and because I can, I made the spacebar the every single bit, which I'm not which I'm not mistaken is just the, the number 31. Now it may surprise you to know that I did this all in one day. Well, pretty much all in one day. This, this circuitry right here, that was done not in one day. What I'm getting at is I did this in like under 24 hours, maybe under 20, I don't even know. Now if you think that, oh, you'll just like throw something together with no prior knowledge or anything, don't do that. I tried that a while ago. It did not go well. Learn the basics. Watch videos of other people learning like what I did. But genuinely, I can genuinely say this. This was a super fun problem solving experiment. Am I going to build this in survival? No. I don't think there's enough redstone on earth to make this. Okay. Now, as I said before, I'm not actually 100% sure if this counts as a computer. Um, because it doesn't count. So... Maybe that doesn't make it a computer. It's using computery bits, you know. It, it, it can type it can type letters. How fast? I don't know. Is this gonna break? Okay, yeah, that broke. That's not what I typed. But the great part about this is that there's like it's it's just dust. If you mess something up with a big breadstone door, you usually have to like rebuild the whole thing. But with this you just have to, like, run the reset code, and everything gets cleared. But either way, it'll always be a computer to me. Not just because it does funny computery thingies, but also because it makes a great title. And that's it. That's the entire computer. Nothing to ever add on. Wait a second. Is that a hard drive? <laughs>